start by saying I have not completed the series yet, but I have finished the first three. These next two are next. So within the next month, I will have the entire series read, but I am really proud of myself. These are some really thick, chunky books, and I feel so satisfied that I was able to get through them. Now look, I had contemplated waiting doing this video until I had completed the entire series, but I finished this last week and I just can't wait. I gotta talk about it, it has to come out. I was really bummed. I tried so hard to preserve the spine here, but you can kind of see there's a little bit of wear and tear. I really need to learn how to train the spines. That's a thing, right? I need to learn how to do that because oh, I'm so sorry, I feel so bad. I have a lot to say about this series even though I haven't completed it yet. I am over halfway done with the series, although I've heard that sometime next year there's going to be a sixth book. So I'm really excited to get through the rest of these. So that way I will be ready for number six. Once I complete the series, I am going to do an entire video on the entirety of this series. But for right now, I just really want to talk about A Court of Wings and Ruin. That is what's on my mind. That's what's most fresh in my memory. So let's get started. A Court of Wings and Ruin, number three in the Akatar series. Okay, my journey with this book was a little bit crazy. For three quarters of the book, I was actually liking it even more than Akamoth, A Court of Mist and Fury, which is crazy because I really did enjoy this one. The romance in this second one is absolutely top notch. I was loving it. For the majority of this book, I thought it was even better, but the ending really, really let me down. And I was so, so disappointed in the ending. This video contains so many spoilers. So if you have not completed the series or if you haven't read up to the third book in the series, I encourage you to pause this video, skip to another video because I don't wanna spoil anything for you, especially if you have plans to read this book and read this series. I want you to have a good experience without any spoilers because you deserve that. This video is mainly for my audience who has read and experienced these books because I wanna hear your thoughts and opinions on it. What is your favorite book of the series? I'm willing to bet it's probably the second a Court of Mist and Fury because that is usually what people tend to really like. But I gotta say, I was loving this, loving this, loving this, loving this until I got to the conclusion. And that left a lot to be desired, at least from my perspective. So I'd love to hear your thoughts, but there was so much for me that just went wrong in the end. I was bought in until the last quarter of the book and then I was just feeling disappointed and quite upset, honestly. So I go into this video kind of preparing to criticize and kind of bash Akawar as they call it, but really I do it with love because I did like this book. I gave this an overall four stars. I really did enjoy it. I just wish things went differently in the end. There was a major bookish pet peeve of mine that happened at the very end of this book that I personally didn't appreciate. I bet it didn't bother many readers, but for me, I really, really didn't like it. So let's start with the positives. I really liked the direction of this book in the very beginning. My concern when I finished Akamoth was that Reese and Pharaoh were gonna be separated for a really long time, potentially the entire book. And I didn't want that. I knew I was gonna miss Reese too much. So I'm really glad that their separation didn't last very long. I think they were back together before 100 pages into this really chunky 699 page book. So I really love that they were reunited. I really liked their reunion. I thought that was really sweet. The romance isn't as exciting and spicy as this one, but it was still really sweet and I was really glad to see them back together. So talking about Tamlin for a minute, I really have despised Tamlin since book one. I have never liked him. I thought he was super lame and his character is kind of just all over the place with where his powers stand at the current moment because in book one, he was absolutely just lame. Couldn't do anything to help her when she was undergoing all these trials in Under the Mountain with Amarantha and he just had to sit there and watch as she was tortured and almost killed. Actually, she was killed. Anyways, that's, that's not what this video is about. We'll talk about the entire series once I actually complete it. My heart softened to Tamlin towards the very end because what happened to Reese in the end could not have happened without that dude, without Tamlin. And after everything, Farah did some pretty messed up stuff to Tamlin, which he deserved 100%. He deserved what he got, but he still helped her. He found it in his heart to find the desire to want her to be happy and to really give her Reese back when he was apparently dead. Okay. Let's start with the biggest thorn in my side when it comes to this book. 
I really, really despise character resurrection. I can't even think of an example in which that was executed properly and where I was okay with it. Now, this is an unpopular opinion and I'm sure probably no one agrees with me. I was actually okay with Resand dying in the end and staying dead. That would have sat better with me than having him die for like half a page and then just bringing him back to life. Character resurrection, doesn't do it for me. I think that is so cheap. I think it's a cop out. When you bring a character back to life, the entire magic system just kind of goes out the window because clearly there are no limits. These characters can kind of do whatever they want, whenever they want. There are no real dire consequences because if you die, you can come back to life. No big freaking deal. So I don't like that Sarah J Mass killed off Reese and then immediately brought him back. I don't think he should have come back at all or she just should have not killed him off, period. I think that's all I have to say about this. I would have preferred that he stayed dead. Actually, I prefer that he just didn't die at all and then just save ourselves the drama and the temporary mourning of his character. I think it's a pointless thing to do. I think it was, an, I think it's an incredible waste of emotional energy and I simply just didn't care for it. Now, the end of this book for me was not believable. Not at all. You're telling me that Elaine is the one that King is the King of Highburn? No, absolutely not. You should have seen my live reaction to that when that happened. I thought there's no way that would have ever happened. That is not realistic. I don't believe that. There was so much that happened in the end. I just didn't buy it. Elaine killing the Hybern King, that was one thing. I was like, no, I don't buy it. That definitely didn't happen. The whole resurrection thing we've already talked about. Didn't like it, didn't buy it. Also, this is a great war that is occurring at the end of this book. You're telling me that everybody survived except for a couple throwaway characters like Farrah's dad? No one cares about Farrah's dad. It's okay that he dies. At least one major character needed to have perished in order for me to find this story believable. The fact that everyone survived is just simply not believable. It's war. Somebody has to die. I'm sorry to say it. If I had to pick Oh, I hate to even say it because I actually really like her, but if somebody had to perish, I think it should have been more. Sorry. I really want to keep Cassian around. I really want to keep Azrael around. I think more would be my pick, but at least one major person should have gone down. I don't know. I just didn't buy it. I didn't find it believable. So I guess the only people that die were the Surreal, which I was bummed about that. I was bummed about that. It didn't necessarily happen in that grand battle during the whole war situation, but nevertheless, he was killed by that stupid, what's her name? Ianthe. I'm probably saying that totally wrong. Ianth, Ianthe, I guess. So the Surreal dies, Farrah's father dies. You know, no one really cares about him. Amran dies, but comes back immortal. Not immortal, a mortal. Reese dies, comes back. Oh, I guess the bone carver dies, right? I think in the end, um, no one really cares about him, I don't think, or at least I didn't. It's just kind of like this weird entity, dude, brother to the weaver, I guess. Did I still enjoy the book? Yes, absolutely. I really enjoyed this book, despite what I'm saying about it. Yes, there were things that bothered me. Do I think it should have been done a little bit differently? Sure, but I did enjoy it. Also, I really wish Sarah J Mass would trim the fat on these books because there is just so much going on in one book. Actually, both of these. I enjoy both, but my goodness, are you telling me both of them need to be this long? I felt like it was really unnecessary, especially with this one, which we're not talking about this one right now, but there was just so much stuff that I feel like could have been omitted. Wasn't really completely relevant to the overall plot line, so could have been nixed. This one, this one just seemed to go on for forever and ever and ever. Even though I enjoyed it, I was like, okay, enough already. I'm good. I get it. Let's move on with life. I was ready to be done with it. I was totally ready to be done with it, even though I enjoyed it. Another thing that kind of bothered me is the magic system for me was missing something. I just, maybe I just don't understand the rules about the magic system. It just kind of seems like anything and everything goes. There are several moments throughout all of these books where Pharaoh will admit that she has spent every ounce of magic that she has at her disposal, yet somehow the situation is very dire that she pulls from some very deep magical reserve and she has just enough to get her by. What reserve tank are you pulling from? I don't really get it, but I mean, what, what gives? I mean, how do you have access to that? How much of it do you have? You always say that your magic is completely spent, yet you're still able to pull some little bit from thin air. I don't really get it. 
I don't know. I am used to very hard magic systems, meaning the magic has rules, it has limitations. I don't feel like this magic system has limitations. We're bringing back people from the dead. I'm pretty sure just at this point, everything goes. Also, can we talk about Farah's letters to Tamlin? Those are so lame. <laughs> Woman, you are telling me that after this significant amount of time and the love that you had for Tamlin, when you run away initially, this happens in book two, by the way, she's just like, I'm not coming back. Don't look for me, goodbye. Okay, actually, I think I tabbed it because I wanted to come back to it. <laughs> Three lines. I left of my own free will. I am cared for and safe. I am grateful for all that you did for me, all that you gave. Please don't come looking for me. I'm not coming back. Wow, for having such a meaningful relationship with this dude, that's all she could give him? Lame. Well, she does something similar in this book, and it's at the very end. I don't think I actually tabbed this one. Oh, hmm. Two lines. Incredibly underwhelming. My note to Tamlin was short. It conveyed everything I needed to say. Thank you. I hope you find happiness too. Woman, this man, who is still in love with you, by the way, just helped bring your mate back to life. He didn't have to do that. He did that for you. And that's all you have to say to him? Wow. If I were Tamlin, I'd be pissed. Like, seriously, maybe a little more effort into her notes could have been there. That would have been appreciated. Also, the overuse of the term mate, both in this book and this book, kind of drove me crazy. I was like, okay, we get it. He's your mate. And it's repeated a lot. My mate, my mate, my mate. Yes, we understand, we get it. No need to beat us over the head with it. To conclude this rant, I would like to say that I did enjoy this book. I really, really did like it. Although Farrah kind of bothers me, she's not my favorite protagonist. When it comes to Sarah J Mass, if I'm looking at female characters, Throne of Glass, Selena Sardothian. Now that's a character I can really get behind. I love Selena. Farrah is just okay. I don't know, she kind of annoys me with her painting and there are several comments through this book. Oh, I named this painting that I haven't done yet, but she'll see somebody and feel inspired all of a sudden and she comes up with a title that she would paint. And I don't know, I was just like, it's just kind of annoying at this point. But all that to say that I really did like this book, despite everything that I said about it, I do recommend this series. I don't recommend all of the books in the series. I get a lot of disgruntled people who comment on my content when I say skip this one. It's not worth it. I get it. You probably have to read this one in order to understand what goes on in this one. So I say that knowing that it's terrible advice, but I wish I would have skipped this one. I would have caught on eventually. It's all right. I don't think I really, really needed to know what happened here in order to appreciate the romance and all the action that happens in this one. So it's again, probably terrible advice, but it's advice that I would give because <laughs> this was terrible. I actually read this a couple years ago. I shelved it, had zero intention of coming back to the series at all, but so many people just rave about this one constantly that I just, the curiosity got the better part of me and I just had to know. I'm really glad I picked it back up. And now my book club is reading it. So now I'm kind of forced to read through them. So I am very excited for the next part of Farah's journey a court of frost and starlight and then followed by the well as of right now the conclusion which is not the actual conclusion a court of silver flames rumor has it that a sixth book is coming next year and i'm really excited about it so i will be picking that up on release date or pretty close to release date before we wrap up this video i have to share this little sticker that i found at a coffee shop book swap so cool this is an Akatar sticker. I had to have it, best $3 I've ever spent. So my question was, what the heck am I gonna do with this thing? So I think I just have to add it to my book reading journal, which I have a bunch of other stickers in here. Most of them are Brandon Sanderson related, but I'm sure I could find a spot in this cute little book for it. Hold on. Ooh, I just realized that I have a sticker of The Sunlit Man, which I read not too long ago. It was great. I loved it. Maybe you can see it a little better now that the protective plastic covering is off. I thought that was so cool. I don't have any nails, so it makes this part really challenging. Ah, oh, how embarrassing.
I almost just put that on upside down. I'm really glad I caught that before I stuck it down. There we are. It's a little crooked, but I still like it. So folks who have read at least part of the series all the way up to A Court of Wings and Ruin, let me hear your thoughts. Do you agree with me? Do you wildly disagree with me? Do you like the way that it ended? I'm sure that some people did because it was actually, it was great. I just, I have weird pet peeves and I couldn't really get behind it. I didn't really believe it, but it didn't really hinder my enjoyment overall. So let me know your thoughts. Do you love this series? Would you have been okay if Reese had perished for good? My guess is probably no, but I want to know if there's anyone else out there like me who would have been okay to see what Farrah did after that. I mean, she could have become something quite formidable, having been this heartbroken, mateless high lady without Resand. So that would have been interesting. I would have been very curious to see what she did there. Anyways, let me know your thoughts. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, feel free to do so at this time so you can stay up to date on bookish content. And thanks for hanging in there. I enjoyed this little rant. It was fun. I, I really do enjoy talking books. So feel free to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. And I'll catch you on the flip side.